Well, congratulations on your perseverance. You finally made it to one of the funner parts of it. We're actually going to draw something and do something. Um, you'll find that um, you can do a lot of stuff with Recreate Make It. Is it 100% perfect? No. Is there any drawing perf program that is? No. And when you learn one, learning another one is just more stuff you have to learn. Um, there are other drawing programs out there. Everybody has their own preference. Um, but I found that there's a lot that you can do with this program. They're, uh, it's in its infancy. They are changing things as they go along. And uh, it, it's coming about. Uh, so we're going to go start on the left side and work our way down the drawing things. All right. First one, lines. Click on lines. And when you click on lines and they come over into the drawing area, you'll see you have a cursor or crosshair there. Click and hold it and then draw. This line will be in limbo until you stop someplace and let go. And when you let go of it, there's your line. Once the line is down, you can grab one of the squares and manipulate it that way. Uh, you grab the top. Just it, once it's down, it becomes like a regular image. You can do whatever you want to with it. Okay, that's drawing a line. Rectangles, click on rectangle, come over here, there's your crosshatch. Push and hold, draw it to where you want it, and let go. And there's your rectangle square or whatever. Um, when you've got it down there like that, again, um, it's basically like an image you can come up here to scale and you can change it to I want it 50 by 50 and there there it is um, if you're working with a lot of uh, images in and about each other um, you can lock them together I mean it, basically it's like an image um, We've got circles, same thing. Crosshairs, bring down, draw your circle. You can resize it up here or you can resize it by using the corners. Uh, text, click on text, bring it over. And by default, it always says hello. Oh, what nice manners. Put your uh, cursor in there and backspace it type in what you want um, and once you've got it there um, click out here anywhere and then click back on it and now it becomes just like an image too you can do whatever you want with it uh, image if you click on image There's a whole li a, a ton of things in here. And right now it's clicked on vector images, a lot of animals and just different stuff. And when you get to the bottom of the screen, wait a second, because it'll load more. You can go forever and ever. Uh, one of the nice things about it is up here at the top, you can type in a word. Eagle. And hit search. And it'll go out there and find different eagles. Find one you like, and then click on it. And when you do that, it not only bring it over here, and there's your eagle. Uh, AI. You click on AI, and it brings up a screen like this. And you have to have you have to be signed in and registered and everything to do this, but. You can take this off here, and we can put in here a cat eating a mutant mouse. And we'll see what happens. There's down here negative prompt. What do you want to avoid? If there's something that keeps popping up and you don't want it in there, stick it in there and do it. By default, it gives you one sample. Three or four, that way you... To make your choice and hit generate 
and sometimes it's fast to come back sometimes it takes a while to come back um, sometimes you get good results sometimes you don't get very good results but let's see what we got okay we got that one we got that one so and then once you find one that you like these aren't very good choices but then you hit import to canvas and there it is shows up a lot of times when they come in there's they're really large that you just grab a corner reduce it down to the size that you want okay your next up is pen pen kind of works like a line but instead of just giving you a start point stop point it allows you to continue on so and we're just gonna do the very rudimentary you can play around with it if you want we click on pen we come over here here's our crosshair click and you can let go you don't have to drag it like the other click and go to just near next point hit click and go to your next point hit click and you, it'll continue to do that until you hit escape you hit the escape key and it stops and all those pen marks you made just made a image like that um, I tend not to use this one very often but it's there if you need to use it next one upload if you click upload it's basically like a Windows thing it'll drag you to your directory and you can pick whatever image you want to use and let's go with uh, no, let's go with this one. click it hit open you'll get this a lot the contents larger than the canvas scale to fit yes and it'll bring it down to a more controllable size All right. let me move some of this stuff around so I have a place to drop it All right, that's how you do it. And you can multi you can bring in multiple images and work at everything at the same time. Um, that's how you do it. Uh, extract image is not highlighted. It won't let me do it because my machine is not on. Give me a second to turn it on and we'll come back and do that because that's a fun one. Okay, um, I put a piece of paper in the machine and I've cleared my uh, workspace here. But I have a piece of paper in the machine, so I'm going to go over here to refresh. Hit refresh. Camera's going to look and see if there's anything on the board. Nope, by golly, there's an image on the board over there. We want to work with this image. Um, as you see, you can switch from the workplace to the camera, like we did before. Right click, hide background. Okay, we have nothing here on our screen. Show background. That's out there on the screen. When you hit extract image, I'm hitting it, it looks like it's a photo. And then there's a crosshair over here on the screen. Um, as you would if you were cropping an image, drag it here. Once you've, you've done that, if you want to resize it right now, you can by just moving these little arrows up and down. Uh, and once you are set where you want it, come down here to the check mark and hit the check mark. Okay. Now you tell there's a little different variation there. We're going to go back and look at our work area. We'll hide the background. There's what we've collected. Okay. And as you see, when we did that and we collected that image, we've got a whole nother bar that showed up here at the top. And um, we'll go into detail on that now because we've got time uh, and we've got the image here to work with. Uh, this could be a photograph this could be whatever um, grayscale will work on changing that background to what you want okay we're kind of white there you can go with that but what I tend to do instead of doing that is leave it there like it is um, that's it sharp sharpness is obvious um, where that comes in handy, if you do an image that's really pixelated and you want to kind of soften up a little bit, 
that's what you use right there. Um, we're kind of going backwards. Filter. Uh, you can add different filters to the images. Um, and depending on the image, it does different stuff. Um, but it's all on what you want to do. Let me go back here to whoever it was. Okay. Um, contours. And this type of image isn't going to do much of anything. But what it did was it basically drew a line around the outside of whatever your image is. Um, let me do it again. So right now there's nothing, no squares. You hit contours, it puts a, a line around the outside of the image. And what that allows it to do, you to do is when you're editing, you can make that line that they just put in there a cut line. So it'll print all this and then cut it out. Um, so you don't have to manually do it by coming over here, making a rectangle, trying to find the edge, and like that. Contours did it for you. Um, we don't need it right now, so we're going to get rid of it. And the last but not least, if we were to go print this right now, you would have gray with a little bit darker figures on it. And that would be what comes out of the laser. If you hit edit image, this is very uh, rudimentary. It's nothing like Photoshop or anything, but it gets the job done. Um, this here is you can crop it down lower if you want. If you decide there's something you don't want in there, you can crop it. The eraser, um, if you click on eraser, it gives you a size here and a slide scale underneath of it. And you'll notice here that my cursor has become a circle bigger so everybody can see it. Um, if I put the circle on the colored area and push the mouse button and move it um, and we create that that in most SVG images the background that's clear shows up like this checkerboard pattern and we could go around the image and do it but the, the problem is is you get too close to the image you take the image with it that's where the next one comes into uh, play the uh, magic wand or magic paintbrush or whatever you click on it <clears throat> it shows tolerance here and that tolerance is on a slide scale runs up to 255 to zero and what that what that does is that broadens the amount of color range that's going to take away and i'll put on 70 and i'll take come over here and put that magic paintbrush on the background and i'm gonna click it in just a second all that stuff just disappeared. Um, so here's what I have. Um, if you print it now, you're going to have different spots. If I come in here um, on their, their hands, and you can up here in this corner is um, zoom, zoom in, zoom out, undo, redo. Uh, so I'm going to go here to their hands, and I'm going to undo their hands, their ears. and I'll show you what happens if you mess up here and just say it so say I'm doing this and my magic wand doesn't get on the qual the color it gets on the skin or the the leg and, and oh everything just disappeared I just ruined it no you didn't you got to undo and it'll, it'll come back and like I say you can undo multiple times to get back farther where you want um, okay so I've taken away that I can leave it like that and print it looks like they got clothes on or if I want pure stick figures you got that when you hit confirm it saves it and brings you back now you've got an image that you can use on whatever project you want um, so there I've got my two people and I'll come over here to text click on text Um, we really skipped a couple things on text that I sh 
shouldn't have skipped. Um, so here I have text highlighted. I get a whole other menu up here at the top. I can change the, the font to different things. I want to do this so you can see it better. Um, and these fonts are whatever in your Windows program. I'm assuming Apple does the same thing. But those are your fonts. So you can go out in uh, websites that have free fonts like Defont. Um, there's other ones. Uh, and pick up a font that you like and you can bring it back and you can stick it in there. Um, just a word of warning though, if you have like 500 million fonts in your library, it'll, it'll slow it down a little bit. So just be aware of that. Okay, so I've got my um, text where I want it. If I want to manually resize it up here, I can do it by typing in a number. Kerning is a whole different thing. You hardly ever use that. If you need it, it's there. And then curve. If I've got this highlighted and I hit curve, uh, this next bar comes up and you can dip the text that way or you can dip the text that way. Get it where you want it. And there you go. Um, I think that covers what we missed on that. Um, when you're doing stuff with your images, and this goes for font, it goes for anything else, you'll notice that occasionally you'll have stuff show up on the screen. Like here's 25.7, 22. Want that? That's just giving you measurements on the fly, and a lot most times they're helpful. It also it's telling me right now that everything on the left is lined up because it gave me a line. Um, if I bring continue to bring it over, once I hit center, a line actually appears. And if I bring it up, when I get to the bottom of the image, a line shows up. And the more you draw, the more things that you do, the more you'll notice these things that are really helpful. Um, and a lot of people take it for granted. They just keep going about their business and then look and plan. Well, how's come it doesn't do this? And how's come it doesn't do that? Well, yeah, it does it on its own and you don't even have to do it. So it's, it's a pretty good program. Okay. That's, uh, that for the left side. We'll see where we're at. If that might be it for this one. I don't know. Okay. That puts us about the time limit for this one. We'll see you next time around. We'll do over the right hand side.